Welcome back to another roundtable. My name is Adam. With me, Rusman. Hello, Victor. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. And today we're going to talk about one, possibly one of the best dividend stocks in Singapore, in our opinion. Yep. Yep. And we're not going to waste your time. We're going to tell you exactly what it is. It is Sheng Shong. Yeah. yeah. Supermarket. Yeah. So yeah. basic stuff, uh, but very popular. And why it's one of the most successful stocks and one of the best dividend stocks uh, for now is that since its IPO. Its dividend per share has grown by three point five times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So from one uh dollar one point seven seven cents to six point two cents at this point yep. in time. So there's tremendous growth in terms of dividends. Uh, business seems to be doing well. So we're gonna have a look at um Sing Xiong today and whether this trajectory is gonna be sustainable and it's gonna grow its dividend and all that. All right. Yep. So before we dive into all of that, why don't we have a really quick overview of Sing Xiong's business model? Yeah, basically they are the supermarket business where you go there to buy essential items like your uh, household uh, your Groceries. soap your shampoos yeah. and all this then your non-perishable food right and also uh, fresh produce mm-hmm. you're able to get it in Seng Xiong, right your, your fish life crabs and all this right and they are the second largest uh, supermarket it used to be uh, Fair Price Dairy Farm and Seng Xiong, but mm-hmm. I think around 2000 and I think 17 or 18 they actually overtook uh, dairy farm and they become the second uh, largest, right? So if you look in terms of the number of stores, Seng Xiong have about uh, right now, uh, 2020, 2023, right? The latest figure, they have about 67 stores all around Singapore. And usually if you look at their stores, right? Uh, they go towards the heartland, mm-hmm. right? The suburban area where the there's new BTOs and all these, right? Uh, new houses and they just situated down there. They try to bid for the space. So that is their strategy. Uh, since uh, day one that they're going, right? And on, on top of that, they also do have uh, online stores that you can actually purchase and they try to do a omni-channel, right? Okay. Where you, where there are stores within that one or two kilometers, they can do delivery. So that's why, that's the reason why they try to put uh, a lot of their stores around the different heartlands so that they can do the delivery and people can purchase it online. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah, you know, my mom don't live in Singapore, but every time when they come, he, she comes to Singapore, <laughs> she wants to go to Xing Xiong. All right. Yep. And then I ask her why. She said the stuff tests are very cheap. Cheap. Value yeah. for money. Okay. Know, for the same product that you get from uh, compared to other supermarket, you can get you know good value out of Xing Xiong, right? So that's the brand I think that has built yeah, successfully. Correct. One of the lowest cost uh, producer and it's provider. it's good stuff as yeah. well. It's not like cheap and yes. bad. It's cheap and pretty cheap and good. good yeah. Right? yeah, It's value, yeah. basically. They are, they, I think they mostly have a lot of their house brand, mm-hmm. right? But if you talk about international brand, I think NTUC Fair Price is still the, okay. the to-go place where a lot of people yeah. go, right? I think uh, in 2018 or something, there are, there's an uh, uh, analyst report that did um, uh, by, I think, Maybank Kim Hing, right? Mm-hmm. They actually uh, test all the products. Is it Seng Xiong really that cheap, right? So okay. in the end... Uh, mm-hmm. Their household brands are, or their the, the essential products, right, are able to fight between fair price and them, right? Mm-hmm. But they are very famous for their fresh produce, where they are they are much mm. cheaper compared to an, uh fair price. Right? Okay, so they do have this uh, sourcing sourcing team that they can they are able to source goods at a for good quality and at a very reasonable price yep. for the consumers. All right. Yeah. So I think one of the things about dividend stocks is that basically you want, if you're an income investor, yes. you yep. want dividends. Basically, you want something that's pretty stable. Yeah. Resilient. Resilient. Yes. And because yeah. you don't want your dividends to go up and down, especially if you're yes. a retiree, yeah. you depend on an income, you want something that's pretty stable and hopefully growing as well. Yes. And the thing about Sing Xiong is that it hit the news during the pandemic, right? Yeah. <laughs> Everything. And it did so well. So, in, in this case, would you think like Sing Xiong is one of the best dividend stocks in this sense because it's resilient in that sense. If there's a recession because it's cheap, people will still go there. Yeah. And if yep. the economy is doing well, people are going to shop more. They're going to go shop at Sing Xiong as well because it's still value for money. What do you think? Yes, correct. I think the value for money is really their, their, their selling point, right? I think when it comes to economic crisis, when the recession happens, people's mind uh, always have like money, save, you know, money, save yeah. money in yeah. their, their thoughts and yeah. all this, right? Uh, and Seng Xiong came as a va- their branding has been very consistent about value for money so I think that's the pretty much the reason why people still go to mm-hmm. Seng Xiong yeah. as compared to uh, if you go to look at China um, or maybe the US people don't really go because they buy their food uh, or not essential and non-perishable food online mm-hmm. uh, because their supermarket is generally quite far away from their home mm-hmm. but in Singapore it's a very very different case right because the the supermarkets uh, we are, Singapore is very small yep. and the supermarkets all over everywhere in your estate within one kilometer you can, you can find a lot of supermarkets yep. and yep. Sengxiong and all this yep. Yep. so do you think in that case that e-commerce is it going to be a threat uh, to Sengxiong? Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to be a, a big threat uh, I think e-commerce is going to be a big threat if your products right, 
uh, or the supermarket is is uh, premium compared to uh, low low cost, right? Okay. If you look at Costco in in the US, they are still doing very well because they are low cost. Mm-hmm. If you look at uh, Sing Siong, uh, the landscape or the competitive landscape, you can see that uh, in general, uh, fair price is reasonable than quality. Sing Siong is sort of like value for money. Mm-hmm. Then after that, you have cold storage, which is more of a premium. Yeah. So you can see that throughout the years, right? Uh, they are actually took, took over cold storage, which is more of premium. So I think in terms of low cost, I think uh, that's the reason why they are able to better e-commerce. And they themselves have e-commerce store, which I shared with you just now. Yeah, right. I mean, I personally never shopped at uh, Xinxiong e-commerce before, but uh, I think if you look at the peak of the pandemic during the you know, April, May 2020, the lockdown, the e-commerce as a percentage of total retail sales in Singapore has peaked at about 25%. Okay, now they hover around 14, 13, 15 percent there about okay, it's normalized, right? And even during that time, supermarket were doing very well. Yeah. yeah. At the yeah. time when e-commerce delivery, the demand was so high mm-hmm. because of the like lockdown, yes, right? Correct. And now things have stabilized over the last since the lockdown over, it has been hovering that range. Uh I think even their stores are still doing quite well. Yeah. So people are still very kind of used to you know short as Xinjiang. Especially when it comes to fresh produce, you don't want to deliver it to your home. Yeah, yeah you correct. want to choose your you own want to go stuff, to the right? stuff. Yeah. 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 Go down yeah. to the mar- supermarket and then you buy the fresh produce produce and when you buy the fresh produce you buy yeah. other stuff as well. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. and it's also human behavior, right? Yes. As long as there's instant gratification in human mm-hmm. um, and you can immediately get the product then you wait for it you will eventually go because it's very convenient in mm-hmm. the US it's different be- or in China it's very different it's because like I mentioned the supermarket is far away but yeah. right now you have your Seng Siong and your fair price very close to you so as long as there's instant gratification you're not going to wait right yeah I think it's a habit that we have in Singapore maybe <laughs> in Asian cities where yeah. you just go down and just pick yeah. up something Correct. and it's right there yeah. available yeah. for you Yeah. Uh, I mean I have the habit as well I mean I'll, I will admit that I actually do delivery for my groceries Yeah. Uh, but like you said it's for non-perishables yeah. like cans of coke and stuff yeah. like that <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. if I wanted like fresh produce I'm like fish and stuff Yeah. I, I mean I, do, I don't buy bread online right? okay. because I want to eat bread immediately so I just go down to the <laughs> supermarket you know the oh, supermarket you just craving for bread yeah <laughs> <laughs> example, right? I just go down to the supermarket. I just buy and just go back okay. up, right? right? Instead of like buy, I need to wait. Okay. Maybe pay the same day delivery. That's a higher fee. If yeah. I wait for, for a few days, it kind of yeah. Yeah, it kill off my. I think craving, it, it, you know? it's kind of like if you want to do bulk deliveries for non perishables, maybe yeah, you do a delivery. But anyway, Singsung does delivery as well. Yes, correct. Yeah. Uh, within the the region the radius, of the, right? of uh, the supermarket. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I think uh, I think in terms of Singapore. That is the habit that we have. Yes, I correct. I think anyone who are watching this, you're Singaporeans yourself, we kind of know that is the case over here. Uh, but um, Xingxiong has a China business as well. Yeah. yeah. yeah they're expanding into China. Uh, tell us more about that one. Yeah. So basically, they have uh, initially started off one, uh, then it become profitable, then they, 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 they open the second and it's still profitable. Then eventually, they, they grow to four. And I think now is they are going to open, to open their fifth, f- fifth, fifth yeah. store in China. I think it's in Kunming. Okay. Right, but I do, I'm I'm not quite optimistic about their China uh, business because overall, you know, China is a very big country, mm-hmm. and the e-commerce over there in China is very very strong. Yeah. Right, and I- even top supermarkets in China are not doing that well. Also, right, mm-hmm. compared to the uh, e-commerce, right, which is doing much uh, better in China. So I think if you were to look at Xinjiang, I feel that you should look at their Singapore business. Mm-hmm. Uh, the China business is just a Bonus? Bonus, right. Okay. Because uh, it's right now it's a growth plan. It's not a growth driver. Mm-hmm. What I mean by growth plan is it's still a dream. Okay. Right? It does not contribute. It does contribute to the revenue, but it's not significant. They don't, do they disclose the uh, They didn't disclose okay. it. Right? right. So it's not significant yet. Mm-hmm. If Once it becomes very significant that it can move the revenue, that's going to be a growth driver. And that's where you're going to have to really take note of Seng Siong because you're going to push up the profit and increase your dividend. But right now, I think that's just a bonus. I'm just going to value based on the Singapore, Singapore business. business only. Okay. Yeah, the community competition landscape in uh, China, I think is very, very competitive. Yeah. You mm-hmm. look at a lot of players like Pintoto, uh, Alibaba, Alama, Meituan. I mean, they are all going to the community group buying and all this includes your know, fresh uh, produce as well. Okay, so they are... Uh, I think trying to get rid of the middlemen, uh, they go straight to the farmers. Mm-hmm. That is the what a lot of these uh, e-commerce platforms yeah. trying to establish themselves so that they get the best price. So it's very difficult for I think Xinxiang to go in and you know disrupt that market. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've been to actually Xinxiang's AGM. Uh, conducted in Mandarin actually <laughs> <laughs> yes. I somehow understood it yeah. <laughs> but I, I got I the, 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 the feeling I got from the management is that they're actually very um, conservative yeah. very well run 
And I think they have a very different business philosophy. Like, for example, let's say in China. You, if you go to China, usually you want scale. You want to like just yes, dominate yeah. the whole landscape. But I, the feeling I get from sanctions management is they want to do things properly, do it right, and then they expand. Yeah. So that's why you, you, you were saying that they opened one store in China. Yep. They made sure that store was profitable, was doing well, and then they opened another one. Yeah. And then another one, and then another one. So yep. maybe they... Do you think they could still do well in this kind of like model? They're not... I don't know if they're going to conquer China. Who yeah. knows, right? Because it's a different... I think it's very hard because you're not the dominant... You're okay. not the player over there. But they could it, still like succeed yeah. in this way? In yes. This way? It, yes. It could be. If they build yeah. their own niche. Uh, but yeah. again, you don't bet too much yeah. on it. Okay. Uh, at the I, end of the day. Yeah. I think the China landscape is more comparative as compared to the okay. Singapore landscape. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, so if you're looking at Xinjiang, basically the Singapore market is the home market. Yes. And I, I do think they can still grow here because Singapore is not exactly <laughs> the biggest country in the world. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you think there's potential for them to grow? I think they still can grow as long as the population growth and inflation. Okay. Right. So if you look at their strategy, like I said, they always go to the heartland. They go to the new, new HDB houses, the BTOs, uh, where they try to bid for the space and they put their Xinjiang. Uh, outlet over there at the space, right? So, but there, there's also chances that they can't get the space. For instance, uh, the place where I live in, uh, they got outbid by somebody else, mm-hmm. right? Another smaller supermarket. So, so they didn't get the space, okay? Right? But, but they, but then they are also across the road. There's okay. also a Sengxiong. So oh. probably that's the reason why they didn't get the space, right? So as long as there's more BTO and there's more population, uh. Definitely, their their revenues will continue to increase and profit, and also inflation will continue to push up. Mm-hmm. Right, that's, so that's basically the main growth. And don't expect fast growth in terms of their stores. Right, in mm-hmm. the past, right, their stores like in 20, 2011, they started off with twenty five stores in Singapore. Right, right now they have sixty seven stores, uh, but throughout the years they are slowly adding like three stores, four stores. Early early yeah. on the years they are adding more stores. Right, mm-hmm. about uh, about like more than five stores. Or, or maybe uh, three or four stores. But right now, the management say that they're probably going to target three or four stores, mm. which is on the new estates, heartland, and yeah. all this, right? So I think they decently, they, they are able to grow in that way. So as long as there's more stores, there's more population, there's new BTO, they'll definitely continue to grow in terms of their revenue and operating income. Okay. Of course, on top of that, there will be inflation, right? So yeah. with inflation, you know, companies across the board, you know, all the products you see in the supermarket started to yeah. raise the prices, yeah. and that's what will also benefit uh, Shenzhong. And these are whole. essentials; you have to buy them. Yeah. Yeah, yes, right? correct. Yeah, yeah. I, that's the feeling I get from the management. They're actually very well run in that sense. They make yeah. sure that when they open something, they're very sure it's going to succeed in their new location, and they open it. Yeah. So they're not like kind of like I don't know, maybe like a McDonald's or Starbucks model, where they just like <laughs> spread as fast as you can. They really. You're yeah. conscientious about opening new co- locations to make sure that they succeed. Yes, correct. Yeah, so I think that's the question that I'm asking because when it comes to dividends, uh, you don't want it just to remain flat. You yeah. kind of like yeah. want it to grow. So you think that Sengxiong will continue to grow next uh, five, ten years in Singapore? Yes, correct. Yeah. Uh, on a longer term, they are it's definitely able to grow uh, their dividends, mm-hmm. right? Because it's a, first, it's a supermarket business. It's very resilient. Mm-hmm. Uh, they grow with population inflation, okay. right? But then we also have to really look at in a short term mm-hmm. whether their dividend will be affected or not, right? Okay. So in 2021, their dividend is about 6.2 Singapore cents, yep. right? Their forward dividend is about 6.3 Singapore cents, mm-hmm. right? So they are... Based on their TTM, trailing 12-month dividend, U is about 3.86. Okay. So that's the U right now. But then if you were to look at Seng Siong, right, it may, even though there's 3.86, right, if you compare with alternative, like your T-bills, mm-hmm. your Singapore saving bonds, they are all traded at um, about 3.88%. Okay. Right, slightly lower than 4%. So it's almost same as Seng Siong, the, the U, right? Mm-hmm. But then it's, the, the key is whether there's risk on Seng Siong and whether they, 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 they are able to grow their profits and earnings moving forward. Okay. Right? Yeah, let's so, talk about the risk then. Yeah, so so let's look at uh Seng Siong in twenty you can see that there's a dividend spike in 2020 and 2021. So pre-COVID, right, their dividend was about three 2019 was 3.55 cents. Mm-hmm. And 2020, right, was 6.5 cents. Yeah. Right. It was very high because their profit jumped very significantly. Their operating profit, I think, literally jumped about 40%. Yeah. Right? Because back like then, 2020, people are snatching tissue paper. Yes, correct. <laughs> Everyone just went to the supermarket. No, you couldn't even go out. Yeah. The only reason why you could go out was go to the supermarket. The toilet paper is, <laughs> the toilet paper is gone, man. <laughs> right. So, so there's, there's a lot of people stocking up. I, I even been to one of uh, my friends' uh, house yeah. and I go to look at the storeroom. They literally stock up the food 
Okay. And everything in that store. And toilet you know. paper as well? Yeah, correct, correct. I don't understand. You, use <laughs> yeah. you can use water, you know? Yes, I, do. I don't understand. So I think it's, uh, they, it's, it's really okay. very funny. I don't okay. understand why you just talk up toilet paper. So, okay. yeah. yeah. So, so, so that's a spike. So the question is, is it sustainable? Okay. All right. So what happened is that in 2021, uh, Singapore actually, uh, no, there's no more circuit breaker. Mm -hmm. And we sort of like back to normal in the first half of 2021. Okay. So you can see that in first half of 2021 for, for Sing Siong, their operating income actually uh, literally dropped about 10.8% operating income. Mm -hmm. But if you talk about net profit, they dropped about 12.1%, mm -hmm. right? So... So then on the second half of 2021, around August, right, there's a heightening alert because the COVID case came back again. Mm -hmm. So people start stocking up again. Okay. And that helps them to hold uh, the profits for the for the, for, uh, for the second half of the year, which they, they came back. And for that whole year, they only dropped about 4.3%. Uh, okay. right? But if you just talk about the second half, right, they actually increased by 4.9%. Okay. But the first half, they decreased by 12.1% in terms of the net profit. So you can see that actually they, are, they actually spike up because of a lot of these COVID cases, right? Mm -hmm. But when it comes to 2022, um, they actually start to taper down because Singapore start to uh, uh, open up, open up yeah. and all this, right? So you can see that uh, on the third quarter of 2022, uh, they actually uh, dropped in terms of their operating expense by 7.9%. Okay. Right. Uh, and overall nine months, right, they actually dropped about 1.3% in terms of operating profit. Still, they're still able to maintain. Okay. But the management just says that moving forward, you can expect more tapering, right? Okay. People are not going to stock up that much. So we can expect moving forward, their profit may drop, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but the question is whether their dividend is sustainable. Okay. Right? So so right now, their forward yield is still high. They are still maintaining because their payout ratio is about 70%. Pre-COVID, right, their payout ratio is about 90 to 100%. They literally pay out everything. Mm -hmm. right? so, so I think that there, there will be a case where their profit going to drop and the payout ratio will increase. still buffer for them to, to increase maintain. It. But yeah. then, again, uh, whether they can able to maintain over a short term, that's another question. So we can expect that there's going to be a maybe there will be a, either they maintain or they're going to drop their dividend moving forward. Right? All right. So what, basically what you're saying is that they did well because of the pandemic. Yes, correct. And then now the pandemic is over, yeah. things will just basically go back. Yeah. We'll normalize. Normalize. Yeah. More people are dining out basically. Yeah, yeah. that's they're true. less at home. Yeah. So because of that, their profits could actually just come down from the pre, I mean, from the COVID uh, peaks. Yes. And then that could affect dividend. Okay, yes. <clears> so <throat> now go back to the comparison <laughs> with the alternative like bonds yeah. and all this. So so right now you have uh, bonds that has 3.8%. There's no risk. If you hold out throughout, you're going to get back your par value. Mm -hmm. right? Then now you have a supermarket business where you got about the same yield, but then there's a chance that the, the profit is going to drop. Mm -hmm. right? And and when the profit drops, usually the, the share price will react together with it. So, okay. so, so, so which one is the more more risk-free thing, right? Mm -hmm. So I think the bonds is a better alternative right now. So like Warren Buffett said, every time when you compare a stock, you have to compare it with the alternative right, right. and right. see which one is uh, much attractive to you, right? So right, right now, it's, it's, it makes more sense to look at the bonds than you look at Sing Siong right yeah, now. I mean, Unless, are, yeah, so these are just, uh, just some of the short terms, uh, you know, mm -hmm. negativities that I think Twitter yeah. is flagging up. But over the long term, I think Sing Siong is still a uh, you know, good dividend yeah, stock that mm -hmm. you should be watching out for, right? Uh, right? Of course, you need to buy at a good price. Yes. At this stage, I think we just think that the pricing basically isn't attractive yes, because of the yield. So I, I think trading. we should demand a higher yield for Sing Siong. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, you know, their profit drops and... The and they are able to out. maintain a dividend, the share price go down, then okay. the U went up. Right. Yeah. So that that you will lower your risk when you enter into Seng Siong. So so you will buy, you got your dividend and you've mm -hmm. got capital upside. Yeah. Right. And of course, uh, when you say Seng Siong U is four percent or five percent, for example, right, it doesn't always stay the same, right? In fact, yeah. if you look at the IPO, when they first listed, it was about 33 cents and it was yielding about, I think, 5% if you yeah. bought it, if mm -hmm. you managed to subscribe to the IPO shares. And you hold it until today, your yield on cost will have grown to 18 18%. 18%. More so, than 18%. So if you bought Seng Siong at the IPO yes. and you held those shares to yeah. today. Yeah. And your expectation was like the yield is like 5%, right? Yeah. I and mean, you just hope that Seng Siong continue to grow, open up more store, inflation yeah. kicks in and then they'll make more, slightly more profit yeah. and they raise dividend along the way. And in the end, you are getting more yeah. than 18%. Uh, you know, you yeah. based yeah. on the cost price. The most pay. recent one is six point yeah. two cents dividend per share over your thirty three cents IPO price. IPO price. Yeah. So yes. you're like eighteen percent yeah. yield. Yeah. And that's the beauty of income investing, right? Yeah, if yeah. you pick the right income stock and you hold it for the long term, generally your yield on cost will rise. Yeah. 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 So that is something that you need to bear in mind. Okay. Of yeah. course if you invest in treasury, 
uh, you know, it's beauty like bills, it's yeah. just yeah. flat. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. give you that kind of. Gift. But of course, you have to really pay at the right price, right? Yes. yes. Right. Yeah. Because that at the time was 5%. Right mm-hmm. now, it's not. Now, yes. now it's less than 4%. But yeah. then you got better alternative. And mm-hmm. there's a reason the profit may drop, yeah. the dividend may drop as well. At that yeah. time, 2011, probably the, the bonds are much lower in terms of the mm-hmm. dividend. Yeah, because uh, there's low interest rates and all that. You, right? Yes. So I think when it comes to dividends, a lot, a lot of people kind of forget that <laughs> growth is actually an important part yep. of dividends as well. I mean, yeah, you want stability and you know for dividends, but growth is a big thing because, yeah. like you said, I mean, from I mean five percent yield when you first buy yeah. it, yeah. now it's eighteen yeah. percent. So you need to basically find stocks that are able to give you that dividend and grow at the same time. You don't want something that's kind of like yes, remains correct. flat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Sengxiong is a don't get us wrong, right? Sengxiong is a good business. Yeah. But a good business can be a bad investment if you pay at the wrong price. Yeah. Right. So you, you want it to be a good business and a good investment. So yeah. you have to really pay at the right price. Yeah. Right. So I guess you can answer the question at this point, you won't touch a uh, buy Sengxiong at this point. Yeah. yeah because yeah. it doesn't pass the criteria that we have in the dividend machines. Okay. Mm-hmm. So okay. those are the criteria basically we set out. Make sure that the dividend companies must pass those criteria before we even yeah. invest in them. Yeah. 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 So basically, if you're interested to find out more about how you can invest, you know, for dividends and passive income for your portfolio, do check out dividendmachines.com slash YouTube. We basically go through an analysis of what we're yeah. doing today with Sing Xiong. It's not just about the dividend you receive and the yield. You got to find out how do they give you that dividend? Yeah. How does the business perform to give you that dividend? And then in moving forward, whether they can grow it as well. Yep. Yeah. Because if you pick the right stock, you can actually grow your dividends tremendously like you on cost at this point for yes, sanctions yes. 18% if you bought yes. it at IPO yeah, excluding the capital gain excluding <laughs> capital gain so if you yeah. pick the right one and it's only for 10 years it's, yep. it's pretty fast it's not a long time it's 10 years yeah, yeah. 10 years, 10 11, years. 12 years yeah. yeah it's pretty good so if you're interested to find out more about how you can invest that way for dividend growth do check out dividendmachines.com slash YouTube we only open our course once a year I think it's closing this Sunday I saw whenever you're watching this uh, it could be over but it closes this Sunday 26 February 2023 as of this recording yeah. do check it out yeah. All right. So, uh, you wouldn't buy things at this time because the com- the comparable instruments like your T bills are offering yeah. the same yield. Yeah. Yep. But so you you will wait for the right you, opportunity. You, you yes. just yeah. put it in the watch list and yeah. wait for the right time to come. Mm-hmm. All right. And this and when the time comes, you can actually buy as a dividend stock, right? And mm-hmm. this is the kind of stocks that you can buy and forget about it. Because it's resilient as it's well. It's very resilient. The business yeah, right. is resilient in that and sense. And good management, mm-hmm. right? Yep. And it's something that you probably will check just once a year. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. And you just, uh, just receive the dividends on a year-to-year basis. Yep. <laughs> All right. So I hope you like that uh, analysis of Seng Xiong. I mean, is that at this point in time, things will change. You always need to keep in, you know, can cut, yeah. uh, keep yeah. up to breath. Investing is very dynamic. Yeah. yeah, things will happen. You know, maybe they explode in China or something like explode yeah. in a good way. I mean, you know, ex- <laughs> you know, you know <laughs> explode in a good way. So things could happen. I always got to find out more what's happening. Keep in touch with the company, basically. Yep. So I hope you like this analysis about Seng Xiong, uh, and whether you're looking at it right now, the yield is at 3.8%. 2.86. So yep. you can possibly want higher for the risk you're taking. Yes, correct. Yes, yeah. uh, so no recommendation to buy or sell anything. Uh, this is just our research and our opinions. We hope you like it. So I think that's a pretty good wrap up, guys. Yep. yep. All right. So my name is Adam. There's Rosemary. In. That is Victor. Thank, Thank you so you. much for joining us. Any questions about Sing Show, put them in the comment section. If there's anything else you want us to discuss and you can give us ideas that you want to find out more about, put them in the comment section as well. We'll have a look at them. And if there's anything that's really popular, we will consider them for a future roundtable. And of course, uh, subscribe to our channel. Many more roundtables coming up. Like this video, hit the like button. And of course, do check out dividendmachines.com slash YouTube if you want to learn how to invest for dividends and growth. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you around again.